I haven't been this wrong about something in a while. At least a week. I am crazy for not putting Duncan Robinson on my most improved players list in the NBA awards video. I stand by all the other awards, but this was just dumb. JJ Redick basically summed up how I feel about this kid. I didn't know your whole story. This year starts and you're starting for the Miami Heat. And I'm like, what the f***? <laughs> <laughs> and you're awesome. Like, it's crazy. I appreciate that. Listen to this journey. Who goes from the Governor's Academy High School to Phillips Exeter Academy to D3 Williams College to Michigan to undrafted the G League, then an NBA starter? What? Duncan Robinson's story is inspirational because there are life lessons along the way that work for him in a way that we all can see because he's in the NBA, but I think it applies to everyone. Hey guys, it's Casey Kiernan, host of the AM Hoops YouTube channel. Hit subscribe. We are still coming out with five quality videos Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. all the way through the NBA suspension. I just wasn't very good in high school. I was a late bloomer. That's what Duncan Robinson said about his early days playing ball. He was just five foot seven as a freshman in high school. He came off the bench for a pretty average team in New Hampshire. People were telling him even playing D3 would be a reach. In fact, and this is just mean, his high school principal questioned his mom wanting to film their games for college recruitment. He told her, uh, you don't think he's gonna play basketball in college, do you? Ouch. Now, don't get me wrong, he worked hard, but the big difference maker was something he couldn't control. Duncan grew from five foot seven to six foot seven between junior and senior year. He grew so quick, his mom couldn't buy new clothes fast enough, but still he had no offers, zero. He literally grew too fast. Duncan said, quote, I was so uncoordinated, I had to teach myself how to run. I was so skinny. A major turning point for him in his life really was one game in high school where he passed up an open shot. His coach called a timeout and told him that is selfish. You are being selfish if you don't shoot. He still had a lot to learn. And this is lesson number one in the Duncan Robinson story. Believe in yourself. He believed in himself when literally no college in the country did enough for him to take a fifth high school year just to try to make a D3 school somewhere. It turns out Robinson chose the perfect D3 team to join too. Williams College not only let him play, but they went all the way to win the national title and Duncan was named the D3 National Freshman of the Year. If that's not enough, his coach was friends with John Beeline at Michigan. So when the time was right, he took a visit and committed to the Wolverines. Why Michigan? Well, not because he was gonna play. In fact, he was there to red shirt as a walk-on, no scholarship. He went there to get a good education because at this point, the NBA was still a total pipe dream. And that is lesson number two in the Duncan Robinson story. He didn't plan any of this. He just worked really hard where he was at and it paid off. He didn't plan to go to Williams College to get to Michigan, and he didn't go to Michigan to get to the NBA. It wasn't easy at Michigan though. After his red shirt year, he started as a sophomore, but he was benched as a junior. He started as a senior, but benched halfway through. Duncan though found that he belonged in D1. He became the first player ever to play in a D1 and a D3 national championship game, and he was the first D3 player to earn a D1 major scholarship. But just like out of high school, people didn't believe in him. Duncan watched the 2018 draft go by, his name was not called. With the 60th pick, Justice Antetokounmpo. Thank you for watching the NBA Draft 2018. He'd be one of hundreds undrafted trying out for the G League. He shined though at that level, just like he did every step along the way. But this time, the Miami Heat believed in him. D3 player Duncan Robinson signed a two year, $3.1 million contract in 2019. He is literally the most unlikely story in the NBA today. Just go by the numbers of D1 players in the country, 2% of them make the NBA. And I only counted before Duncan, four D3 players who have ever played in the league. The last one was Devin George who won two titles with the Lakers. So by that count, four players before Duncan, he had a 0.01% chance of making it to the league when he signed that contract. 
But as it turns out, he is also in the 0.01 percentile of humans who can shoot three pointers. Duncan absolutely exploded onto the scene this his second year in the league. Duncan, yes. Here's Duncan from deep. And the shot clock Robinson. He has tied the franchise record. You look at the numbers, they're insane. He's hit nine threes in a game three times in his first full season. Duncan joined Stephen Curry, James Harden, Clay Thompson, and Buddy Heald as the only players ever to do that. Among players who take at least three trays in a game, he's got the third best three point percentage. He's fourth in three point makes per game. Now, in a sense, he was kind of lucky to go undrafted because he could pick what team he wanted to try out for. Duncan says he's lucky he picked the Heat. Adrian Wojnarowski recently talked to Duncan's agent and he said, quote, over the last 15 years, the ability to go out and find players that are overlooked, undervalued all over the world it's the Miami Heat and the San Antonio Spurs. And why did his agent choose Miami when he had some other offers? Because of their history of developing players. When there's a guy like that, the agents, it becomes a magnet. And sure enough, that kind of development is exactly what he's gotten on the Heat. Coach Eric Spolstra tells him to shoot wild shots that he airballs. If he doesn't shoot, he has to run sprints. He gets yelled at if he even dribbles inside the three-point line. The Heat are basically training their former D3 shooter to be aggressive. Recently on the JJ Redick podcast, Duncan was talking to Redick and he said, quote, you're a great dude off the court, but when you step in between the lines, it's a different persona. I'm learning that's what you need to survive at this level. He may be a humble guy off the court, but he needs to be a dog to keep his spot in the NBA. If Duncan was born 15 or 20 years earlier, he would probably live back in New Hampshire with some normal job. Instead, he was born just in time for the way he plays to be extremely valuable in the NBA. His job instead, oh, you know, to fly around the country, receive passes from guys like Jimmy Butler, make threes and millions of dollars. His box scores would be completely out of place in any other era. 88.6% of his shots are threes, which means he almost never takes twos. That's actually the highest three point rate in NBA history. He's played in 80 games and made 253 threes. No one's made that many in that few games ever. One thing he can improve on though is defense. Teams are targeting Duncan, but he's getting better. In early March, Duncan had a plus 7.2 net rating when he's on the court that leads the heat. Even though he's a starter in the NBA for one of the league's best offenses, some players don't respect him yet. Duncan actually told a pretty funny story about that playing LeBron James earlier in the year. I remember watching him last year. I sat on the bench the whole game, but he had, I think, 50, I think, in Miami, um, or at least 40. Um, and then this year when we played against him both times, it's just, yeah, you know, you see it on TV, but like to see Did it. Did he acknowledge you? No. He didn't? No. I think he actually, I think actually he was guarding me. This, we played them uh, early in the season. At this point, I hadn't really like done much. So he yeah. was guarding me and he was just like sitting in the paint. Um, and I made a shot and he kind of like scoffed at me, like, <laughs> <laughs> like who is this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and I actually didn't shoot well that game. That was okay. like, when I was still trying to, you know, figure it all out. I think by now, LeBron James, like the rest of the world, has been put on notice about what Duncan Robinson is all about. And he's about to get paid big time. Right now, he makes just a little over 3 million bucks, very low by NBA standards. But his game is similar to Davis Bertans on the Washington Wizards. And if Duncan gets what Bertans is projected to get, that could be around 15 to 17 million bucks. Over a four year contract, that would be about $60 million. Not bad for a kid with zero offers out of high school. Duncan's own teammates though have been a huge help. He says Jimmy Butler is always there with support, quote, congratulating me every five minutes. Last year's teammate Wayne Ellington, now on the Knicks, is a three-point shooter that took him under his wing early. Maybe the coolest part though of Duncan Robinson's entire unlikely story is how humble he is about the whole thing. He knows how lucky he's been all along the way. From growing a foot taller in high school, to being born at the right time for his skill set, to picking Williams College at the perfect time. Duncan says, quote, it took so many things outside of my control to get to this point, and that's not lost on me. I love the lessons in Duncan Robinson's story. He believed in himself enough 
to do an extra year of high school. He worked hard wherever he was, which opened bigger doors, and he stayed humble the entire time. For Duncan Robinson, that looks like an NBA future and possibly a $60 million contract. To me, it's the most unlikely inspirational story in the NBA today. Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a daily NBA video.